G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography with my second look at the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. And this time I'm going to take a look at image quality, specifically an image quality in low light using high ISO. If you watched my original intro video for the G9 II, you probably thought it was a pretty glowing endorsement of the new camera. Well, I'll admit I'm a big fan of Lumix cameras, I really like the new body design, and I'm really happy about the upgrades and some of the brand new features on the G9 Mark II. But none of that counts for anything if it doesn't produce great images. And one of the things we all want to know is how it performs in low light at high ISO compared to what we had in the original G9. Well, it seemed to me the best way to test that was to take the exact same photo on each camera and compare the results. I went into this with an open mind on what to expect. The G9 II has a 25 megapixel sensor compared to the G9's 20. Now my understanding is that when you pack more megapixels into the same size sensor, noise increases and low light performance suffers. On the other hand, we're looking at the latest evolution in Lumix sensor technology compared to a camera that was first released way back in 2017. So the obvious question is, is the low light performance on the G9 II worse than on the G9? Or is it better? And if so, is it significantly better? So I've done a side-by-side -side comparison, and unlike some reviewers who would do these things in a studio with a standardised colour chart or something similar, I prefer to try these things out in the real world. To make this a fair fight, I tried to keep things as equal as possible. The photos were all shot with a 25mm focal length, using the Leica Panasonic 12-60mm zoom lens. I shot them all in manual mode with the aperture at f5.6. Each time I increased the ISO by a stop, I reset the shutter speed by a stop to try and maintain the same exposure. It was all done on a tripod using a two second delay with the image stabilizer turned off. I used auto white balance and standard photo style. And finally, I focused the first shot for each camera in AFS and then switched over to manual focus to keep the focus locked in place for every shot. At the time of making this video, the RAW profiles on the G9 II haven't yet been released, so I can only show you photos shot in JPEG on that camera. So once again, to keep things fair, all the comparison photos from both cameras were shot in JPEG. And apart from cropping, there's been no editing. So what you're seeing is straight out of camera. For each pair of photos, the G9 II images are larger, thanks to the higher megapixel count on the new camera. I didn't resize them to match because that seemed like the best way to make this a fair comparison without skewing the results in favour of the G9 II. So with that very long introduction out of the way, let's look at some results, and we'll start at 200 ISO. It's worth mentioning here that the base ISO on the G9 Mark II is 100, but the recommended minimum ISO on the original G9 was 200, so I decided to make that the baseline for both cameras. And now for a closer look at each image. As you'd expect, the G9 performs nicely with no sign of noise. When you compare it to the G9 Mark II, there's an initial impression of a larger, more detailed image, and perhaps sharper as well. But that's to be expected with a 25% boost to the resolution. Now on to 400 ISO, and although I always prefer shooting at 200, I never really had an issue with shooting at 400 ISO on the G9. And looking at the larger view, the G9 still looks great with no real loss of quality. When we look at the G9 II, it still has that added sense of size and clarity from a higher resolution sensor, but in terms of noise, there's still no real difference between the two cameras. We keep working our way up through the settings, and our next stop is 800 ISO. On closer view, the G9 still holds up pretty well. The fine details still look good, and while there is a hint of noise starting to appear in the sky, you have to blow it up pretty big to really notice. The G9 II is perhaps beginning to pull ahead here, not just bigger with more clarity of detail, but also no real sign of noise even as you blow the image up quite a long way. Now we're at 1600 ISO, and this is about as high as I ever like to go on the G9. I always found this was where noise could start to become problematic for a lot of subjects. On closer view, the noise is becoming more apparent not just in the sky, but it's beginning to show in the flat surfaces of the buildings as well. It's here at 1600 ISO that the G9 II starts to widen the gap. As we blow this image up, it's maintaining much the same quality that we saw at 800 ISO and below. Here we are at 3200 ISO, and this is where I always found noise levels on the G9 were hard to ignore. 
and as we blow this image up you can see the noise in the sky is becoming pretty bad. It's more obvious on the buildings and it's even beginning to muddy up the clarity of the fine details in the shot. In comparison, the G9 II is still holding up remarkably well, beginning to show a hint of noise at about the same level as we saw at 800 ISO on the G9. At 6400 now, and this is one of the very few times I've ever shot at such a high ISO on the G9. And you can see why, the sky is becoming increasingly speckled and patchy, and the fine details are beginning to get kind of, well, mushy. When we look at the G9 II image, I can start to see a bit of softening of the fine details, only noticeable when you really blow it up, and still relatively low levels of speckled noise in the sky. This image is still comparable to G9 photos taken at a much lower ISO, and I feel you could still make a reasonable quality print out of this file. On to 12,800 ISO, and we're really getting into academic territory now, because I don't think I've ever had a reason to actually shoot this high. You can see even in the small view that the G9 image looks a bit hazy. Blow it up and you can see that things are really starting to fall apart, very speckly throughout and very rough in the fine details. When we look at the G9 II image, we can also see that this is where things take a fairly abrupt turn for the worse, with a substantial drop in quality from the previous shot. It is still a lot better than the G9, but frankly you'd be hard pressed to find a good use for either of these images. Finally we get to 25,600 ISO, which is the upper limit for both cameras, and if you've set your expectations low, then you won't be disappointed. The G9 image is a mess that only gets worse the closer you look. And this is the point where the G9 II finally gives up the fight and image quality has pretty much fallen apart. Once again it's not as bad as the G9, but it's pretty faint praise to say that one unusable image is slightly less unusable than the other. But remember, we've pushed the ISO as far as it'll go now on both cameras. So that's our journey from 200 to 25,600 ISO, and I'm happy to see that the new G9 Mark II with its 25 megapixel sensor doesn't just give us more resolution, but better image quality overall, particularly in low light. I really don't care how things look at 25,600 ISO because I would never shoot that high anyway. But that crucial area from 1600 to 6400 is where we always wished we could squeeze just a bit more quality out of the original G9, and that's exactly what we have in the G9 II. And of course that's going to increase your success rate with certain subjects where we've always struggled when the light gets low. I'll be interested to read the comments, and I know that some people are going to say they don't worry too much about noise these days, with all the huge advancements in noise reduction software over the last few years. But the truth is, no matter how good our editing options have become, we would all rather work from a better quality original. And after a six year wait for a successor to the original G9, we didn't just want fancy new features, we wanted better photos. And I'm confident in saying that's what the Lumix G9 II is going to deliver. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.